I want to bring in David Barnston on this. Now, David is a market watcher, uh, but I want to your comment on politics. What do you think about blame for the Georgia loss? Yeah, I mean, Herschel was a, was a questionable candidate, and Brian Kemp winning by the margin he did at governor tells it all. Uh, Trump really fought against Kemp. Kemp won huge. He fought for Herschel. Herschel lost twice because of the runoff in the election. I don't think Herschel was the worst candidate, though, that Trump endorsed. I mean, I think we had other losses that were kind of Trump-backed, and the state of Pennsylvania was really ground zero of Republican embarrassment. We lost to a guy who had a stroke and who had a lot of health issues. Yeah. And, and yet, really, we could have won that race, I think, with a better candidate. So I, I, I think Chris Christie may have bad motives for some of what he's saying, but I don't think what he's saying is that out of bounds. OK, how about the market? Uh, we've got a big week coming, as we've been telling our viewers. Tomorrow, we've got the Consumer Price Index coming out. What do you see coming up? Yeah, I think that the biggest issue that's been going on in the CPI is that housing numbers lag in the way they report. So they're still showing like they're going up, and we all know they're going down. I have eight metrics I follow. All eight show rent prices and housing prices yeah. dropping. CPI, though, because of a lag effect, is still showing it going higher, so it's distorting. Goods inflation has gone down six months in a row. And I think that the CPI number is weakening. It's still not low enough. You still need prices coming down further. But I think... I think that the Fed is seeing the direction that they want to see, and I think CPI will uh, back that up tomorrow. Okay, if the Fed is seeing the direction it wants to see in inflation, what does it do Wednesday afternoon with interest rates? They've back been off telling, a uh, yeah, for three weeks they've already been giving it away. They're going to uh, raise rates half a point instead of three quarters of a point, and then all the question mark goes to the February one meeting. Are they going to pause, raise another quarter point? So the the concern in the market has been they're going to break something before they stop. I think the Fed is saying hey, I wonder if we can kind of get away with both, not break something, back off now, and then take credit for inflation coming down. As you know, I've been saying all year, inflation was never in the Fed's portfolio. It was really a supply issue, and now the, a lot of the supply chain's gotten better, Stuart. All right, uh, David, you're with me for the hour, yes. and we appreciate that, so stay right there, please. Here's a, here's a story that's of great interest to David Barnson. Employees on Wall Street pushing back on calls to return to the office. So oh. is a flexible work <laughs> schedule here to stay? Yeah, uh, it's a disaster. Now, it actually is not happening as much on Wall Street. But in Silicon Valley, you see even some of these companies said they're never going to have to come back, have thrown in the towel. Uh, I think Snap is now saying four days a week, and Apple has gone back on it. Um, their productivity has dropped so much. Most of the CEOs I talked to and company owners have said, we thought things were going well during COVID, and we didn't realize that was a certain period of time where everyone was used to it. Now we desperately need people back in office. Um, I, uh, my entire company, five days a week, 100% has been back since very, very early on. I've never heard a complaint. Now, maybe they wouldn't complain to me, True. Uh, yeah, but my wouldn't. point is, oh. is that my view that Jamie Dimon's been good, David Solomon's been pretty good, fire everybody who complains. It's not an issue for the, the more seasoned worker because they've been in the office, they, they know how things work, but for a younger employee, I think it's going to be terrible. Yeah. And we might realize how terrible and disastrous it was for even their personal careers in a couple of years. Mentorship still you matters. Mentor you get mentored in the office. You, you really develop as a professional being around other experienced people. You don't get mentored by email. No. That's fine. Stay there, David. The danger of this war is extraordinary, and, and it can go on for years. But this oil and gas thing, it looks like you know, the Europeans will get through it this winter. Mm -hmm. But this oil and gas problem is going to go on for years. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, if I was a, a, you know, in the government or anywhere else, I'd say I have to prepare for getting much worse. I hope it doesn't, but I would definitely be preparing for it to get much worse. Yeah, I mean, why did we abandon energy independence? Why can't we drill for our own energy? Come on. But Jamie's been pretty solid on that. He has said that before on the floor of Congress the to AOC. Energy. Yep. But he even said yep. to AOC, this idea of cutting off capital to energy companies is ridiculous. Yeah, and, and he's I think right. he's exactly right. He is indeed. Meanwhile, we'll talk to David Barnes, who's just fortunately sitting right next to me. You know a lot about this California fast food law. Yeah. What do you think would happen if it goes to 22 bucks an hour? Well, of course, it would be just detrimental, but not just for customers and not just for the industry, for the workers, because they would just expedite automation, bring sure. in more kiosks, and they would lower total labor cost. That's the whole problem economically with this idea. It's not going to do better things for workers because there will be less workers. Mm -hmm. So what, we're working hard fight against it. There's going to be a ballot to try to get rid of this initiative. This is heavily backed by the SEIU. Oh, a union. Yeah. This is a union proposition. Absolutely. They're, they're driving this thing.
go forward. One hundred percent. They drive a lot of things in California. Don't I've they? noticed. Did the yes. unions run California? The teachers' union is the most powerful union in the United States of America. The California Teachers Union. McDonald's prices actually fell down five percent. So the average price of all items at McDonald's is three dollars and seventy-seven cents. Um, it's it's. Nearly three dollars more at Wendy's. Oh, at that's six okay. Change. That's a big difference. You know who's the best dividend difference. growth of all those names? Oh. Tell us, McDonald's. Oh, I... <laughs> well, that's interesting. It's a... uh, Democrat Senator John Tester, he says his party keeps losing in rural America. He's right, but does he give a reason for it? He does. He says because the Democrats have bad messaging. Any comment, uh, Mr. Bob? I don't know how they can talk to people that they don't even know exist. I don't think they have a bad message to middle America. I don't think they know there is life west of the Hudson River. <laughs> life west of the Hudson River. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm not going to take that on immediately, but I'll think about it, okay? You're all right, oh, Bonson. Yeah.